Good morning, everybody. A few times uh, I've talked about these two psalms that the Ariya Kodesh, that Rabbi Isaac Luria, the great master of Kabbalah, of Jewish mysticism, taught that we should say before our morning prayers and, and appear in the Siddur before the morning prayers. Uh, they've become part of our liturgy over the past few centuries since that time. <coughs> And, the, and I've mentioned that these two psalms are intimately connected to the holiday of Hanukkah that we just finished uh, last week, a few days ago. And that the message of adding these two psalms into our daily liturgy, these two kapitlach <coughs> tilim, excuse me, is that we need the light of Hanukkah all throughout the year. Um, and throughout the you know the dark winter and especially since we're possibly entering into a time <clears throat> that has been referred to as a dark winter a very dark winter we need these two psalms to get us through we need the light of these two psalms to survive so we can survive through this time both the this winter season and becoming years uh, that may be very difficult and dark, although we can still pray, like the Holy Bardich of Arov said, the Kedusha Slavi said, you know, their Rosh Hashanah, our Rosh Hashanah was not this Rosh Hashanah, so maybe we still have hope for, for a, a Git Geben Shior, for a good year. Now, these two Psalms, and I know how to say Psalms, unlike the uh, the former vice president, who, who claims to be the holder of the office of the president-elect, which never existed before, the office of the president-elect, but he he would he referred to the palmist, and we know it's it was the psalmist, not the palmist. Even I, who come from a uh, Hasidic community where we say uh, Tehillim and not Psalms, right? But, uh, meaning, we say the Psalms, we call them Tehillim, which is, you know, the old name. In any event, these two Psalms are Psalm 30 and Psalm 67, which are traditionally, uh, in many circles, recited after the lighting of the menorah, in addition to other Psalms, like uh, Psalm 91, Psalm 33, and so forth. And Psalm 30 is linked very much to Hanukkah because it's Mizmur Shir Hanukkah Zabayis Leduvid. It is the psalm of the dedication of the house by David, the, the psalm for dedicating the temple. People also use it when they buy a new house to dedicate their house to God. When they move into a new home, liturgically speaking, even though, but it's obviously originally speaking of the temple. But the word Hanukkah appears in the title of the psalm. So one might think that's the whole reason why we invoke this psalm as a psalm of Hanukkah, because it's a psalm, Mizmashich Nikas Abayis Ludovid. It is a psalm, a song of the Hanukkah, of the dedication of the temple by a King David. And then Psalm 67 which Hasidim and Sephardim say also before the Pesuket Zimra, before Baruch Shemar, on weekdays, uh, on days other than Shabbos, that Psalm 67 makes the Tzuras HaMenorah, it makes the form of the Menorah, and Kabbalistically there's an Indian, the Ramban, Nachmanides, says that there's a concept that if you have in mind when reciting Psalm 67 the shape of the Menorah, that the psalm itself resembles, which we can discuss a little later, that it's as if one fulfilled the mitzvah in the temple of lighting the menorah. And so there's a, a connection to the ancient menorah of the temple that the high priest would kindle to this Psalm 67, Kabbalistically and uh, mystically. The question is, is that it? Again, just because of the shape of the menorah is that the only connection? And I want to posit that, no, let's study these two psalms together. Read them. 
simply, in a simple way, we don't have to look, even take time to look at Mepharshim, let's just look at the commentaries, classical rabbinical commentaries, we can just look at the words and see not only the connection to Hanukkah, but more importantly, the connection of bringing that light of Hanukkah to the dark parts of the winter and to the dark parts of the year and the dark parts of history that we need to illuminate and bring hope to. And so that is the connection, really, that we have to embrace here with these two psalms, that we need these two psalms, really, to get through our long and bitter exile, which is compared to night and to a dark, cold winter. So first, let's go through Psalm 30, because I think there is an order between these two, not just you know liturgically in many ways, but also in the lessons of these two psalms. So we'll begin Mizmor, Shir Hanikas Habayas Ledovid. As we said, a psalm, a song, <coughs> the dedication of the house, meaning the temple, by David. And I'll try to say with the trop as well, with the tamim. Aramim choadav no eki dilli soni volois machto oivaili. Translation, I exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. This term, Billy Sunny, it's like lifting a bucket out of a well. You know those, the wells they, that you, you crank the bucket up that's on a rope? That's what it means, Dili Sunny. A Dili means a bucket that goes down into a well. Dili Sunny means you lifted me up like a bucket out of the well. Beloi simachto oivaili. And you did not cause my enemies to rejoice over me, meaning rejoice over my defeat. You did not allow my defeat that my enemies would enjoy. Adonai Elohoi shivati elecho vatir eni. O Lord my God, I called unto you and you healed me. O oh Lord, you lifted me up from Sheol. Sheol means either the grave or the netherworld, uh, the hell, you know, the Hades. You lifted up my soul. Nafshi nefesh means the basic life force, meaning you lifted my life out of the grave. You saved my life. Chiyisani miyor devor. You brought me life from those who descend into the pit. Zamaru ladonoi chasido v'hoidu l'zecher konshoi. Sing unto the Lord, you his chasidim his pious ones, his saints, and give thanks and recognition to the memory, to the mention of his holiness or his holy mentioning. And I think this is where we come to the message that we need to survive in Golos. Ki, Rega, Bapoi Chayim Birdsoy Noib Arevulin Bechi Velapoi Karina. I'm driving, so it'll be a little bit uh, trying to remember where Target is. My wife wants me to go over there. I, oh, I know where it is. Okay. All right. So here is the message really about suffering and pain in life in general, whether we're talking about on an individual level or on a national level or on a community level. If there's just one second, a raga means like the way the rabbis say it, what is this word, raga? It means commemora. How, however long it takes the word raga, that's how long a raga is. So it means like a second, a, mi a moment just a moment in his anger, meaning in God's anger, and the word af, it refers to the nose, like when a person gets angry, their nose kind of flares up, right? A moment in his anger, but life, a whole lifetime, Chaim, 
Ritsono and his goodwill. The Arif Yolin Bechi. And the evening we rest with uh, tears, with crying. Valabaikarina. But in the morning there's singing, there's rejoicing. Vaniamarti Vishalvi Ba Now here's the part of that message as well. I said and it would seem that what he's saying here is th this was a folly that uh, that he said. I said, uh, in my peacefulness, in my tranquility, that I will never falter forever. I will never, ever falter. Meaning uh, a person is trusting in his own tranquility rather than trusting in God. He's trusting in the situation rather than trusting in God. And so that's the message here, and that's the wake-up that we have to have here. And that's why we're suffering with this situation. So everybody's saying, why are we suffering with this situation? Uh, is, it, it seems that you know we were trusting too much in the situation, in human leadership, and we forgot about God and we had a lack of faith in God. So therefore, we, um, we are suffering with this situation that we have this lack of faith in God and so this, this situation is being taken away from us, that we, the peaceful situation. We have to recognize even when we have peace that God is the one who gives us the peace. When we have prosperity, when we have tranquility, it is all from God. And so that's the message, you know, meaning the story of Rabbeinu HaKadosh, of Rabbi, Rav Yehuda HaNasi, Rabbi Judah the Prince, the redactor of the Mishnah, where it says that he would pray every day for God's protection, even though he had so many bodyguards protecting him, he knew that the bodyguards were merely the shluchim, shlucha de Rachmana, they were merely the emissaries, the angels of God. And we have to have all of our faith only in God. So then the next verse says, Adonai, So then the next verse, verse 8, it says, O Lord, in your good will, right, uh, you stood up to the mighty, strong will, uh, hills, the mountains. You hid your face, and I was frightened. Again, this idea of Hester upon him, this is an idea that we find throughout rabbinical literature, and actually it's, it's something we find already in the Torah, in the book of Deuteronomy, that God hides his face, um, that's the, that's how we when we experience suffering in the world it's an experience of God hiding his face so God you hid your face and I was frightened so then what happens I called unto you O Lord and to the Lord I made my supplication and, and we should note that the first time when it says Lord that's the Shem Avaya that's the proper name of God and the second time it was the um, it was the, the name as it's pronounced Lord well, there was an interesting thing that the Kabbalists say, that when we recite this in the morning by davening, when the second time when God's name is spelled the way it's pronounced, Aleph, Dal, Nun, Yud, instead of the way that it's written, and not how it's pronounced, that we <coughs> should have a kavona of 10 times the way that God's name is written, the Shemavaya, which is 26, we should picture that name 10 times. 
Now the interesting thing is, five times twenty-six is the gematria of the word ayin, not the the letter ayin, which is seventy, but the word ayin, which is a uh, hundred and thirty, and that that word ayin means I, and so our two eyes are hinted to in this. So it's a tikkun ha'inayim al pi kabbalah, according to what the mekubalim teach. Um, this particular word in this particular psalm, this word, the second time that God's name is mentioned there. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, the, the simple meaning is we called unto God, we prayed, we called out in prayer and supplication to God. And what was our prayer? My bed saw. But a me beridity, El Shahas, a yard her afar, Hayagid, a mitacho. So this was our supplication. What value, what gain is there in my blood, meaning in my death, as I go down to perdition, to destruction? If I turn into dust in my death, Will that dust be able to recite and tell over your truth the way that a uh, that a human being uh, declares God's truth in prayer and supplication and praise and worship? And so that's the that's the message here is that we're saying no. Um, we're not just gonna you know, take it like this, we need more than just, uh, more than just the, the, uh, you know, to merely exist, we need to be able to live to praise God, right? And if we're dead, how can we worship God? Shema Adonai v'chneni Adonai Hiyei And it's an interesting thing that when this word in the previous verse, when it says to go down, the tamim, the cantillation note, actually goes up. So it's a, it, it, that's just an interesting thing. But anyway, back to, we just read that verse. Oh, there's Target. Uh, oh Lord, you listened to me and you had grace on me. The, oh Lord, you were a help to me. Hafachta misbadi l'machal li pitachto sakiv ta'azireni semacho. You changed my mourning into a circle dance, like a horror dance, they call it in, in the modern world, uh, the modern Jewish world, the circle dance. Machol is a circle, meaning a circle of dancing. That's the traditional biblical word. Word. I don't know where this word horror came from. Dancing a horror. I don't, I don't know where that came from. But um, but the uh, I mean, I, but this is the traditional term. Is that you know the dance of God? That the circle dance that we dance in a circle to uh, worship God, but also to express our joy. So our God turned our mourning into a joy. And you opened my, uh, my sackcloth. Sack means sackcloth. It's a cognate word. Uh, and you girded me with joy, like a gartel, like uh, the prayer belt that the Hasidim wear. And it's interesting to think that the Hasidim are so connected to joy and that the the girding of a, of a prayer belt is also connected to joy in this in this psalm. L'ma'an yuzammer cha chavod v'lo yidom Adonai Elohai la'olam aydeka And what was the purpose of God's changing our our mourning to joy and our sackcloth to a joyful prayer belt the answer is in order that, that i should sing to you tell of your glory and not be quiet 
O Lord my God, I will always praise you. And that's the message. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the essential light of Hanukkah that we have to bring with us throughout the year, throughout this dark winter, is praising God and recognizing that God's anger is temporary to teach us that we have to have faith in Him, that whenever we suffer, it's because we're trusting in something other than God, and that the way to get out of the suffering and the way to true joy is through recognizing that God is in control. And I know it's very difficult because we live in a natural world, but that's, that's what we have to work on. That's what we're here for. And so we pray for the president and we pray for the country. And like we said yesterday, the one who answered uh, George Washington at Mount Vernon should answer us here today as well, answer our prayers, because God is forever and and we will sing to him forever, meaning that we will have even eternal life and not merely go down to the grave and, and turn to mere dust, but we'll have our soul is eternal and our, uh, even if it's a, we could discuss the question theologically of a conditional eternality of the soul or not, but we have at least that potential, the potential of the resurrection look forward to as a basic dogma of our faith. So Mir Hashem will make another video about Psalm 67.